What's going on guys, Mini Soten here. Today I'm going to be showcasing my top 25 movies of the past decade. These are the 25 films that I found the most enjoyable from the last 10 years. These are listed in order from least to most enjoyable, but any movie on this list I would highly recommend to anyone who hasn't seen them. Leave a comment down below telling me some movies that you haven't watched or that you were planning on watching and didn't get around to because maybe I can start them off with this new decade. And to be honest, of the three lists I've done so far, this was probably the hardest one to nail it down to just 25. There were a lot of good movies that came out in the last 10 years and picking 25 was really tough. But without further ado, let's get into it. Number 25, The Peanut Butter Falcon. And this will just slip out from under your nose. You two are close. We are. Well then you'll figure out where he's at and you'll bring him back. Are you following me? Jai LaBeouf makes a triumphant return in the 2019 original film. The Peanut Butter Falcon, co-starred by the brilliant Zach Gottsdagen and Dakota Johnson, portrays Zach as a man with Down syndrome befriending LaBeouf's character after he escaped from an assisted living facility. Say what you want about Shia from his early days fighting robots and making history with 4chan, the man can act, plain and simple and he can act very well. When we see him being put into a proper environment and given a good script, he'll come to life on screen. And this is seen extremely well with the Peanut Butter Falcon. Number 24, Apostle. They've seen things. Who are you? Apostle was a Netflix film I was very excited to watch after viewing the trailers during the fall of 2018. It was right up my alley, mixing elements of mystery, cultism, and thriller all into one. And I'd say it delivered pretty well on that. Although with some mixed audience reviews, the combination of its eerie score and intense visuals made it a film that left a great impression on me. Be warned, however, if you have a weak stomach, this film might not be for you because there is quite a bit of gore. Number 23, The Life of Pi. The Life of Pi was a film that I remember being really hyped up back in 2012. I think it's due to the fact that it was based on the book of the same title that we read in like third grade elementary school. Regardless, it shows the brilliant story of a man exploring issues with self-exploration and mysticism all while enduring an over 200 day stint being shipwrecked out in the ocean. It's a great film for a little self-reflection. Number 22, Avengers Endgame. But I was really hoping to pull off one last one. The culmination of over a decade of film. This movie wraps it up all together in a nice little package. I saw it, you saw it, everyone saw this film. Not much more to say than that. This movie broke dozens of records, it's honestly hard to keep count how many. I like to feel as though it's almost this generation's Star Wars. For so long, we waited from beginning to end to see it all finally wrap up, and it's here, and it's incredible. I love this film, and even though it's not one of the most dramatic films of all time, it's still one that I hold near and dear to my heart. Number 21, Uncut Gems. Howard, where's the money right now? Howard, got my money? Howard! Howard! Is it too late? I'm done. That means nothing. This movie said the word fuck 500 times. And it has Adam Sandler's best performance to date. Get him out of the rom-com Cheap Thrills movie. This is what he should be doing for the rest of his acting career. We've seen sparks of talent like this before in other places and works that he's been in, but nothing like this. He is absolutely phenomenal, and he deserves some recognition for this Oscar-worthy performance. Number 20, Paddington 2. The best words I can use to describe this film is feel good. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm going along with a whole circle jerk about no one expected to love this movie so much, I get it. 
But I mean, in all honesty, it's a cute movie. Pennington has humor, adventure, and great CGI. If you want a truly remarkable family film, look no further than Paddington, and more importantly, Paddington 2. Everyone in the family will love it. I promise you. Number 19. It. An evil thing. I, like most people, were pretty skeptical about going into 2017's version of Stephen King's It. Luckily, I was pleasantly surprised. The charming chemistry between each of the kids is something very hard to replicate. It 2017 had everything you'd want in a Stephen King novel adaptation. It had humor in the right places, suspense, and plenty of blood. I was extremely disappointed on how the sequel turned out though. It Chapter 2 was terrible. I was very much looking forward to see how the story would have continued, but unfortunately for me, it just sucked. Regardless, the first iteration of the story still holds up today as one of the best thriller films of the 2010s. Number 18, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Honestly, I could have put any one of the MI movies that came out this decade on this list. They were all fantastic. Although Fallout is regarded as the best of the trio, Who Ghost Protocol you? stood out to me mainly seen. for its intense Burj Khalifa scene. That's one that. stunt I will never forget. It was absolutely insane. I hope that Tom Cruise continues with these movies because he is excellent. Number 17. Live, Die, Repeat. Edge of Tomorrow. Everything. Come find me when you wake up. At this point, I don't exactly know what the real title of this film is, but Tom Cruise makes his second appearance on my list, and back to back at that. A super cool, futuristic science fiction war movie, where Tom essentially enters his own Groundhog Day. He gets infected with some alien blood, which sends him back in time whenever he dies to try and stop the aliens from taking over the world. It's a pretty simple concept at that, but it's a fun action-filled movie. Something perfect to turn on in the background when you have friends over. Number 16. The Grand Budapest Hotel. We need to make a plan for your survival. Hide this. It's in code and you might need a magnifying glass to read it, but it tells you exactly where and how to find Boy with Apple. I'm a baker. I'm the Grand Budapest Hotel is a gut-busting showcase from start to finish. Wes Anderson does it once again with this hilarious story about a lobby boy and a high-struck concierge played by Ralph Finiez. It has about every A-list comedy actor you could think of packaged into this movie, including Jeff Goldblum, Bill Murray, and Owen Wilson. I don't want to spoil too many plot points of the film, but you won't be disappointed watching this. Some of the best laughs I've had have come out watching this film in the last decade. Number 15, La La Land. This is the dream. It's conflict and it's compromised. It's very, very exciting. Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling play their parts perfectly in the 2016 film La La Land. I personally am not really a huge fan of musicals. I can appreciate the creativity and skill it takes to perform them and make them work, but usually I tend to stray away from films and theater that are musicals by nature. La La Land, however, is one of the few exceptions I'll make. The music works within the film. A lot of the gripes I have with musicals in general is the insertion of music simply for the sake that there hasn't been a song in a while. La La Land doesn't follow this trope and tells a great story about a guy and girl falling in love. And honestly, what more could you ask for? Number 14, Isle of Dogs. Because he's a 12 year old boy. Dogs love those. We'll find him. Had the fantastic Mr. Fox come out a year later, it would have taken the spot on my list. Alas, I Love Dogs is still a very good movie. Wes Anderson makes his second debut on my list, directing this 2018 film about dogs on an island. Seems simple enough, right? 
What surpassed my expectations is how feel-good the story felt. The language and comedic style used to make these stop-motion films is dry and blunt, but when the jokes hit, they're hilarious. If you can't tell by now, I'm a pretty big Wes Anderson fan, and I hope he continues to make these films, like the stop-motion type, because they're just so fun to watch. Number 13, A Quiet Place. A Quiet Place is an original thriller film, written, directed, and starring John Krasinski. Set in a post-apocalyptic type of setting, A Quiet Place depicts the lives of a family just trying to survive. The only catch is that they cannot make any noise. If you're a fan of thriller films, this is a great one to watch. It's also getting a part two in 2020, so no time like the present to get started. Number 12, Baby Driver. Edgar Wright tells a fantastic tale about a freakishly good driver named Baby in the 2017 film Baby Driver. Played by Ansel Elgort, Baby is the getaway driver hired by criminals for their post-heist escapades. This film brought forth everything you could want out of an action film and more. Assisted by Jamie Foxx and Kevin Spacey, this movie is a must-watch in the action genre. Number 11, Parasite. Parasite is a drama thriller film directed by Bong Joon-ho, which depicts the tale of families impersonating who they aren't. Beyond that, I can't really give out too many more details. Not only would it spoil, but it would kind of confuse the hell out of you. I ended up having to watch this film twice because I was so confused at first. Regardless, it is still a really good movie, but for some of you it might not be up your alley because it is spoken in Korean and there are subtitles in English. But if you want a great drama slash thriller film, Parasite is the one for you. Number 10. How to Train Your Dragon 3, The Lost World. Have to disappear completely off the map. We have to fight for their freedom. Come on, Mike. Making our way into the top ten, we have How to Train Your Dragon 3: The Lost World. Ever since the original film came out in 2010, I have loved this film series. It's got an easy-to-follow story, goofy dialogue, and some incredible animation from DreamWorks. I could have picked any film out of the series on the spot because honestly they're all really good. I believe that the final installment takes the best aspects of the films and does the best parts in the 2019 iteration. If you have not checked out this film series yet, please do so. You will not regret it. Number 9. The Jungle Book. I know what you are. I know what you are. Inspired by the original Disney animated film, Jon Favreau takes a crack at the Jungle Book story in his 2016 movie. Although most live-action Disney remakes don't receive nearly as much praise as their cartoon counterparts, the 2016 version of the Jungle Book is spectacular. Although it doesn't contain the musical aspects of the original film, the visuals and story are absolutely stunning. It's the perfect definition of an adventure movie, and my personal favorite of the Disney remakes. Number 8. Her. Fun. You really deserve that. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been with somebody that I felt totally at ease with. An emotional story about a man trying to find love her stars Joaquin Phoenix and Scarlett Johansson and is directed by Spike Jones. The film honestly makes me think of all the possibilities of what AI can become. Like, it's entirely possible with some of the advancements in technology that AI can develop personalities that we could be attracted to. I fully believe it. It's a really introspective film that has a great message. One of my favorite dramas of the last decade. Number 7. The Dark Knight Rises. 
Enterprise. A paramount film of the last decade, The Dark Knight fully redefines the meaning of what comic book movies can be. The Dark Knight Rises, although faulty in a few areas, continues the story of Batman in Christopher Nolan's final installment of the series. Tom Hardy steps up and puts on the Venom mask to play Bane. That, along with Christian Bale reprising his role as Bruce Wayne, this makes a perfect end to the Nolan saga. Number 6. John Wick 3, Parabellum. You've got a nasty surprise coming. I've been looking forward to meeting you. I've been a fan of the John Wick series since the beginning. Keanu Reeves doesn't hold back and does an amazing job portraying John, the assassin mercenary, in John Wick. The latest installment kicks everything up to 11 as he's on the run from literally the entire world. The stakes are higher and the action is better than ever. John Wick Chapter 3 does everything right when it comes to a feel-good action film. Number 5. The Hateful Eight. Although it was tough, I solely wanted Quentin Tarantino to just have one film on this list, because if not, I probably would have put every film that he made at the last decade on here. Just would have taken up too many spots. He's released quite a few from the past decade as well, and nailing it down to just one was pretty hard. To many, it may come off as a surprise that I chose The Hateful Eight, and although it might not be his best film, it certainly is my favorite, and that's literally what this list is about, so if you don't like it, you can fuck off. I love the storytelling and the mystery surrounding everything, and that's what puts it at the number 5 spot on my list. Number 4. Logan. No other person has embodied a superhero as well as Hugh Jackman has as the Wolverine. Logan is the culmination of over 15 years of service to the character, and it does everything right. A western style type of story sets Logan and the crew in the future where all the other X-Men have died. I loved everything about this film. The ending is emotional and puts a satisfying end to one of the best comic book heroes of all time. Number 3. Hereditary. Take care of me. You don't think I'm gonna take care of you? But when you die. One of the best thriller movies to have ever been released, Hereditary is simply incredible. Amazing performances by the entire cast, coupled by an intriguing and downright scary storyline, Hereditary is a film like no other. When I first watched this film, I was left amazed and spent the next several hours watching theory and speculation and explanation videos on YouTube to make sense of it all. I love everything about Hereditary. If you want to watch a film that would genuinely scare you, watch this movie. Number 2. Lighthouse. Going back to the basics and stripping everything down to the bare minimum is the best way I can describe this film. Shot in black and white on a 4x3 canvas, this film has some of the best performances from Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson to date. Two people losing their minds trapped inside a lighthouse may seem like a pretty simple premise, but the amount of creativity and cinematography and quirky dialogue makes this the runner-up film for my favorite film of the decade. Number one, Birdman. Full of shit. Music. He's a Hollywood clown and, like and the winner for my favorite film of the year is none other than Birdman, starring Michael Keaton. Editing to make it look like it was shot in one take, the film centers around Keaton and company rehearsing for a play he is directing and starring in. The film surpassed my expectations in every single way. Both stars such as Emma Stone, Zach Galifianakis, and Edward Norton give amazing performances. Birdman is everything I love about movies. It tells a great story and it's innovative. Very rarely will you see a movie like Birdman 
and that's why it takes the number one spot on my list for my favorite film and movie of the last decade. And thus concludes the video. Thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, check out my favorite albums and video games lists as well. My final favorite of the decade video will be on anime and should hopefully be out soon. Appreciate all the support, and until then, I'll see you all next time.